Here at Green Left, we think that activism and protest can take many forms, and I'm here today with a cultural performer, Hannah Gwatkin, who has recently been performing a show in Brisbane called Eco Warrior, the Climate Cabaret. My name's Alex Bainbridge from Green Left. Today we're going to be talking about Eco Warrior, the Cabaret, the Climate Cabaret, and, uh, and issues of activism and protest and music and art. Uh, thanks very much for joining us today, Anna. Before we get started, I just want to read to you the words of uh, Jenny Fitzgibbon in a review of your show for Green Left, so far unpublished. Uh, but, but Jenny wrote, Hannah came on with a whirlwind song story of ecological realities told with humour, grief, anger, empathy, and more humour. There was neither a note, eco-fact, or theme out of place in a beautifully crafted tapestry of self-written songs, parodies, and well-known songs from film and theatre. With jazz, rap, house, using sax solos, piano, vocal, vocal loops, drum, and a few judicious backing tracks, there wasn't a genre her voice couldn't handle, even while tap dancing. And you could hear every tongue-twisting word of it. That standing ovation burst out of a very moved, thoroughly entertained group of people. Wow, what yes. a lovely review! <laughs> so, yeah, those were the words. That, that was, those were the words for a re review of your show. I'm wondering, uh, perhaps, can you just start by telling us in your own words what can people expect when they come to see your show? Uh, where have you played in the past, and, and where can people see you in the future? Yeah. Um, wow. What do they expect? I guess they expect a show that is, as I said funny, um, is uplifting, is thought provoking, is quite engaging. I mean, there's just, there's just a lot of, and there's a lot of information in the songs. I think that's one of the reasons I love doing raps is because you can spit out so much in like a tiny amount of time. So raps are really good for just kind of like <laughs> getting the information in there. Um, yeah, they can expect a, a crazy variety of genres and ideas and i mean they're all related to this idea of you know the climate and ecological crisis that we're in um but it's a very eclectic and very variety show which just reflects the kind of performer that i am and how many different ideas there are around the subject and allows me more creative freedom because i can delve into all the different aspects of performance that I love the most. Yeah. So so where have you played in the past and where can people see you in the future? Um, so I have done it in Sydney before. I've done um, one version, well, two versions of the show with the piano accompanist. That was like the earlier workings of the show. And then I took the best bits from those shows and then turned them into the version of the show that I took to Brisbane Anywhere Festival. And that new version is quite different, mainly in that I don't have a piano accompanist anymore. So I'm just, I have to create all of the stuff myself, which is why I have loop pedals and piano and ukulele and all of these different things to kind of make sure that the musical background is there um, and that I can do it myself, which should allow me to perform the show in more places at more community events. Oh, and also, it is going to be on in Sydney. Again, this new version of the show is going to be on in Sydney at the Sydney Fringe Festival, which is in August or September. But I don't know exactly the dates yet, and I don't know exactly the venue, but Sydney Fringe Festival, it will be on in Sydney. So if people like what they see and hear in this uh, interview, can people get in touch with you if they're arranging a festival or a community group to arrange a performance? Yes. Oh my gosh. Reach out. I want to perform this stuff everywhere. I just want, you know, we need more art, we need more people engaged with these ideas and, um, you know, cabaret and all this weird eclectic artsy stuff is a really fun and easy way to digest the information. And um, yeah, so 100% everywhere, anywhere, let me know, I'll be there. <laughs> so what would you say are the messages you're trying to get across in this, in this show? I, I would say it's less of a message and more of a feeling. I just want people to feel empowered. I want people to feel like their actions are powerful and that they do have some power. And yeah, and this collecting, collective feeling of people power is what makes change happen. Um, yeah, it's more of the feeling that I'm going after. But I mean, there's so many different messages in the show. Like, it's okay to feel like you're not enough. 
because the whole world tells us that we're not enough constantly. That's what all of this is about. Um, it's, it's okay to be like, I can't do this alone because you can't do this alone. You can just do everything you can do, taking more of a pragmatic approach about it. Um, and yeah, and just instilling some hope and also validation for people who have always thought these things and, and, and f yeah, like gi giving them validation and giving them um, the feeling that, yeah, they're not crazy because every aspect of society is constantly telling us that, you know, that, <laughs> that being a mindless consumer is like the way, the best way to do things. And don't worry about that. Just live your life. And who cares? Buy this thing. Like, you know, everything's just about your own personal happiness in this one moment. And don't consider other people. Just buy more stuff. And it's just like, it, it feels like you're a crazy person when you're watching everyone else just absorb this messaging. And you can see, I can feel myself absorbing the messaging as well because it's everywhere. You're constantly bombarded and it takes a lot of mental energy to just keep reminding yourself, actually, no, this is all lies. I, this is not the way that I want to live my life. And validating the audiences that come with those feelings of, no, like you're not crazy there is a better world out there and we do deserve a better world and we deserve more than this and future generations deserve more than this. Um, yeah, and giving them that validation. So can you talk more generally about your thoughts about combining art and culture with politics and activism? Oh man, I think, I think it's so obvious. I think the best artists have done that. I think, I mean, art usually does reflect the culture and the times, but I think you know, there's something way more powerful with using your art as a tool to make change. I found nothing more satisfying in my life than being able to use those skills to, you know, speak out about issues that I care about. And I speak about this in the show as well. Um, my biggest inspiration is Nina Simone. Um, and she used her art in the civil rights movement to, you know, spread the message and sing the truth and you know, it's it's really powerful stuff. Art's a powerful thing, and I I wish more people w would use their art um, in more of a political way. But you know, I think I think all art is saying something. Um, yeah, it's just fun to really lean into that and go, hey, like I have a microphone right now. You're listening to me sing these songs. What if I slipped in some lyrics that were like, hey, have you ever thought about this? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I think it's I think it's really important. I think that's that's definitely the way that I can do it. And obviously, everyone has their own talents and their own skills. Um, and we need everywhere. We need everywhere, everyone doing everything they can. And as an artist, I've always been this creative person. I've always had these weird talents and always wanted to do a bit of this and a bit of that. And so cabaret is it's just the way that I'm supposed to do this. That's the thing that I've that I'm, that I'm leaning into. There are a lot of issues that are important, um, but with the climate crisis in particular, humanity is skating so close to the edge of the cliff. I think one of our biggest battles is to challenge the despair that people feel, to give people a sense that it is actually possible to solve this problem and that what we do today matters. I'm wondering if you could share any thoughts you have about, for a young person today or a person who's con concerned about climate change, how do we keep on going in this situation? Yeah, hundred um, percent. I think it's it's really it's really easy to just give up because um, I, I have so many friends. I've met so many people who are my age and younger who just they don't have the energy anymore. Um, you can. It's very easy to get burnt out in this, and it's also very easy to just learn about the problems and go, well, this is so huge. My recycling does not enough, you know, barely anything. That was the only thing that I knew what I could do. That was something that gave me a sense of power. And that does nothing. The whole recycling thing doesn't even work anyway. As an example, you know, um, it's really, yeah, it's really easy to give up. It's really easy to lose, lose hope. Um, and it's really easy to just not try because you know, your life is 
generally you get rewarded for being quiet and running the rat race and towing the lines and not speaking up and not protesting. I mean, the, the restrictions, the penalties that are, that are being put on protesters is just ludicrous. Like, it's so blindingly obvious that, you know, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's, so, it's so obvious that, you know, all the systems that are in place at the moment are just to keep everything the same way it is and let's just keep earning more profits and let's not, let's delay this as much as possible. Um, and, and it's just wrong. I think, I think people need to continue engaging with conversations and media that are, talking about people who are doing stuff and are talking about the progress that is being made because you know if you're just constantly reading about the negative stuff and oh this happened at, you know oh yes shell's been granted another 50-year fracking license under everyone's noses while tanya pilmasek is like smiling with these pictures of koalas and you're like oh my gosh i'm so over this stuff um it's so it's g important to be aware of what's happening definitely so you can speak out about it but it's also very important to keep actively engaging in communities that are taking action and also hope i mean i don't want to say that like you can only have hope if you take action but this the real feeling of hope does come from taking action mm. when you're engaged with these people and you're meeting people like yourself and you're engaging with the people who come to see your show and you're engaging with the people who want to promote your show and and, and all the people who are having these conversations, you go, oh my goodness, I'm absolutely not alone. And there is a whole world out there and so many people care about this and care enough to take action. Um, so yeah, it's just about engaging with those people and, 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 and stepping out and actually starting to take action and the people you meet in those situations will keep you going. And I guess um, if we can bring those groups and bring those communities out into the real world and be like hi i'm hannah who are you what's your story and like connect and make it feel real then we might get somewhere what you said just then made me think about the slogan which is becoming increasingly common system change not climate change it might seem like a simple idea to some people but it's actually a very true idea we do need system change, and it's not possible to, to do that by yourself. We need to work collectively with other people. Do you have any comments about that? 100%. Definitely agree. The, you know, the systems that are in place now are, are very much just about creating even more of a wealth divide, and it's just so wrong. Like, how, how can you have compassion for human beings and and think that, okay, you know, let's not scrap the stage three tax cuts. Like, are you abs, are you, who, are, what? It's crazy. Even, even my friends, like something that's happening really right now, this whole hex debt thing, how, you know, the inflation has gone up so much and, and all, of, all of my friends, we all have hectic student debt. And the ones who have been, who are just privileged enough to have parents who can help pay off our debt we're the ones who you know i'm so lucky my parents have uh, were able to help me pay that off but i have so many friends who are going to be paying off their hex debt for the rest of their life education should not be that expensive and and the more you learn about you know the climate and ecological crisis and and you know all you just realize that all of these social issues are all intertwined. Racism, gender inequalities, everything. Climate change, pay gaps, indigenous issues especially, they're, they're all the same thing. And if we can just take a step back and look at everything holistically and be like, okay, where are we going wrong here? Let's put the people first. Oh my goodness. There's a lot of work to do. Well, that was Hannah Gwatkin. Thanks very much for your time. Thanks for having me. Thanks for the work that you do. Thanks for the work that Green Left does. I'm, I'm surprised that I only learned about Green Left recently, like through the show. Um, one of the best things about doing the show is meeting all the people and hearing their stories and feeling connected to them and um, learning about cool stuff like Green Left. So um, yeah, I'm glad that 
you reached out and I'm glad that you guys are doing the work that you're doing. And The show is called Eco Warrior, a climate cabaret. Uh, have a look out at festivals or community groups near you. And of course, if it's not performing, if it's not playing near you, uh, maybe you can get in touch with Hannah and try and arrange a performance. Um, it's obviously good to sort of spread this information around. Um, if you do like the work that we here at Green F to do, please become a Green F supporter if you're not already. It's the number one, number one way to receive the content that we produce and also to uh, to you know help the help the wheels keep on turning. Plans are just five dollars a month, and you can find all the details on our website. We'll see you next time.